Good morning. It's Thursday. I have uh, Vince and Louise Bogard here, and we're talking about the Old Iron Show this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Uh, so the Old Iron Show is the club. Is it what is the club called? The Northwest Old Iron Club. Oh, okay. Well, there. Yeah. That was the easy one. <laughs> we just call it the Old Iron Show. Right. Yeah. Which is what we always see over at uh, um, Blue, Blue Heron in the. In big the field. Uh, big field, yeah, mm-hmm. with all the tractors and old mm-hmm. farm equipment and all that kind of fun stuff. That's right. Yeah. Plus, you we say have something? a car show on Saturday. At, at the Blue Heron? Mm-hmm. At, okay. It's so, part, part of the old iron yeah, show. Yeah, the whole show. Uh, so this year, the event is in two weeks, right? August right. 17th, so August 19th. 18th, and August 19th. Mm-hmm. Uh, noon to five on Friday, nine to five on Saturday, and nine to three on Sunday. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, is there admission? Yes, it's $3 per day, or you can get a, a three-day pass for $5. Mm-hmm. That's the original amount we've ever charged, and we've kept it low. We just want people to come and learn a little bit about the history of, of uh, how things used to be. Yeah. So are there people there... Um, like, are there folks from the club walking around and kind of providing history while while people are walking through all the equipment and cars? It's primarily exhibits that are mm-hmm. on display, and people are with their exhibits oftentimes. And if you are at the oh, show, sure. you yeah. wander around, you have a question about something, mm-hmm. then you they're generally you, there. They're somewhere. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. <clears throat> Many of our exhibitors are. From out of town, mm-hmm. belong to other clubs, mm-hmm. and but almost all of the exhibitors will be glad to answer questions. Sure, yeah, I've been to car shows before where, like, the guy's sitting right there by mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. car, and he'll tell you whatever you want to know about it. Right, so. and with the engines, uh, the tractors are usually just lined up, and the owners are probably wandering around somewhere else mm-hmm. or involved in putting on the show. But the engine displays. Especially for safety reasons, when they have the engines running and being demonstrated. But we also have a blacksmith that will be doing demonstrations, and people love to talk to him and and watch what he's doing and the interactive things. Yeah, that's really fun to watch, mm -hmm. for sure. And this year, we're the Northwest Regional Show, Mm -hmm. and that's going to cover six different states. And the um, uh, anywhere from Alaska to... Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. And even though California is in another region, we oftentimes have, we, we already know we have exhibitors coming up from mm-hmm. California mm-hmm. and even sales vendors. So um, it's, it's, it's quite an event. Mm-hmm. I think people camp there. I've seen, right? Haven't, don't people exhibitors. camp kind of out, yes. in the, it's, it's out in the field? It's designated for the exhibitors. Uh-huh. And uh, there are campers on site, yes. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's they're there for they're, they a couple travel. days. Yeah. And we actually encourage them to come early and stay late. Pestegas and Blue Heron have been very mm-hmm. generous with allowing us the use of the grounds a little bit before and after. So we encourage people to come early, do a little sightseeing, mm-hmm. patronize some of the local businesses. Yeah, sure. And then not have to break down the last day of the show, take off the next day or so. Right, right. Yeah. And it's not just farm equipment. There's other equipment on display as well, right? Right. Vince might yes. talk about that. Uh, some logging equipment, blacksmithing, uh, tools, uh, imp- implements. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not... Strictly agriculture, it, it can also be industrial. Sure. Uh, a mill? Is there a mill that's going to no, be a key no, mill? No, not on our... Oh, oh okay. key mill. Key is, mill. I don't know what that means. Key mill, Vince can explain what that oh, yeah. is. Explain what that is, because well, I don't actually, know. our theme is equipment made in Oregon. Mm-hmm. And um, that is how some of these things are coming up this year that are unique to our area. And the key mill has some history here. The key mill was first... Uh, Started manufacturing in Tillamook right behind the Nazarene Church mm-hmm. in a machine shop called Coastal Machine uh, by the na- fellow by the name of Paul Strait. And uh, Paul made this little small machine that will fit into a case about the size of a portable sewing machine. Mm-hmm. But it will clamp to a shaft and cut a new keyway without tearing down the complete machine. And then he moved from Tolmach to Newburgh, 
the company still in existence and they've broadened out their lines to include other uh, machinery. Mm -hmm. But it's it's unique in that it was <clears throat> made or built and patented here in Tillamook. Yeah, that's really cool. Another thing from with the Tillamook connection is the Steinbeck Ironworks. Mm -hmm. And part of the Steinbeck family <clears throat> has passed a few things along to the club in the hope that we'll keep history sure. on display mm -hmm. in some manner. Mm -hmm. And Vince has a few things that he's working on with that. And at the end of, or after the show, it will be transferred to Tillamook Pioneer Museum. Oh, great. And yeah. so it's going to be at some point incorporated mm -hmm. in the basement with the Sander Ironworks. Right, right. Do the Does the Pioneer Museum donate anything to be on display or do they mostly keep it downstairs? Well, we have one item that they don't have room to store and we mm. have been storing it. It's a manure wagon that was built by Harry Norberg mm -hmm. back in the, uh, I believe it was finished in the late 50s. Uh, and it's an oval wood tank that he he made the, where he cut the boards to width, but then he planed all of the angles because mm -hmm. being an oval, the there's there's only four edges that are the same right all the way around mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of being of an oval uh, very very much hand built oh I'm sure yeah, um, yeah. but it, it's still an amazingly good condition mm -hmm. for hauling manure it's good craftsmanship <laughs> yes, it yeah. Is, yeah yeah uh, we're talking about the old iron show that's at the Blue Heron the weekend of August 17th through 19th. Um, you look like you have something else you want to talk about, Luis. Well, I was... I just I wanted was, to make sure I plugged that in case someone tuned in late. Right. I was thinking about the fact that when you asked about the museum, mm -hmm. for several years we were having a Step Back in Time event. Yes. And we're right. all part of the History Alliance, the Tillamook Coast History Alliance. Mm -hmm. And so when we were having the Step Back in Time events, we were all busy doing our own events right. that weekend. And so it, it we didn't actually talk to the museum ahead of time about trying to have them bring anything to the show, mm -hmm. but they are open that day too. And so their staffing situation right. is because now the step time, step back in time event is in over Thanksgiving weekend. This it year. will be later mm -hmm. this year. Yes. Yeah. So that'll be a new event. Are you going to have the, the um, fire hydrant on display that the Steinbeck Ironworks? Yes, I will. Did And what else will you have Vince? Uh, I've got uh, a couple manure pumps. Um, they manufactured many things, uh, but they built cheese presses for the cheese oh, factories, yeah. uh -huh. which were water powered. Uh, they built, uh, tugboats. Yes. They built three tugboats in World War II for the Navy. And those were later shipped to, or somehow got to England and uh, stayed over there as far as I know. Uh, they built a portable yarder for uh, Barry Momano's dad from the Barry's from Tillamook Diesel. Mm -hmm. And they built pawn saws for some of the mills. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think most anything that required cast iron, mm -hmm. Because they had a foundry. Um, they can do we it. We have in our possession some patterns for the uh, manure pumps, and we have patterns for uh, some of the harrow parts they made of pasture harrows. Mm -hmm. So that's all going to be now, when it's, sent to the will it be on museum. display. Yeah. Oh, to the museum. Cool. Yes. Um, it's all outside, right? It, it, is. Cause, it is. And it, but that's why you do it at the end of August because we're the weather knock is, on wood. <laughs> I know it is. It should have some part. decent weather. <laughs> it's it's a little bit of everything. It can. Mm -hmm. One year it was about a hundred degrees one morning, and of course we get such 
strong winds at times. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally there's a shower. So sometimes mm-hmm. the show closes early because of an event of the like weather. that. Yeah. But we are an outdoor museum. We don't have any buildings or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um I'll mention one of the special exhibits, and Carl's Weifel is sponsoring, mm-hmm. transporting a large traction engine, a steam traction engine. It's a 1921 Nicholson Shepard 1650 steam traction engine. It weighs 22,000 pounds, and a lot of people are familiar with uh, the the steam engine that steam tractor that uh, Pestegas had mm-hmm. on display. Right. He used to drive it, or had somebody drive it through the grounds a few times. Uh, each day during the weekend. Uh-huh. And so you can kind of see how it actually ran. Right, mm-hmm. right. And, I mean, it, you hear that thing coming. You see that steam coming out. Right. It's kind of like watching a steam train coming down yeah. the tracks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really a hit with people, and it's exciting. It's been several years since we've had something like that. So it's nice to have something um, out of the ordinary. And where is that? Uh, where is that coming from? It's out. Uh, it's stored at Brooks, isn't it? Yes, it's uh, at, at their Brooks. museum out there. Mm-hmm. The owner lives out in the valley. Oh, okay. Yes, and he contacted us. He found out we were uh, putting the on show. the show, and it was mm-hmm. a regional show, and and uh, trying to offer something that might be out of the ordinary for mm-hmm. us because that's not something we had on the coast. Right. How many exhibits are there? Well, exhibitors, there's probably going to be over 40 mm-hmm. exhibits, and then we have a swap meet and usually about 10 vendors or so. Mm-hmm. We never know from one year to the next who's going to be uh, coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we know some of them are, right. but a lot of them, it's just a, the day of when they register. Mm-hmm. And um, and we usually expect about 700 people um, that come through during the weekend, and this year there may be more than that. Mm-hmm. You never, it, It's all right. variable weather. Well, it, it, I was saying weather. And, well, <laughs> and the creamery certainly is bringing a lot of people in. So. It is. Yes, and it is. sometimes we've experienced where Highway 101 is at a standstill. I've heard recently that it has been. four lanes. Yeah. And if people feel like I can't get off the highway and mm-hmm. back on, on. I'm right. not going to stop. Right. So we saw that a, a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm worried about that this year. But mm-hmm. we'll see. People... People come early, you're probably going to get in easier than if you right, come later. Right, Yeah. right. Is the Blue Heron having any specials, or, or do they do anything special during the weekend? They gear up for us and yeah, have I a know, lot I'm of food. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think that there's necessarily anything special mm-hmm. planned. Uh, not that I've heard. Yeah, but, not that uh, we're aware of. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I mean, they Muff always desk. have delicious food, and they Absolutely. have also all their fun little animals and right, things right. to see a over lot on of things that to side. taste, test. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that come to our show as exhibitors and as visitors will definitely make their way over there and maybe do wine sampling or mm-hmm. have lunch over there. We will have lunch on site, too, and this year is going to be the Twins Ranch Catering. Oh, yeah. And they're also going to have a, a she chef. She does a lovely up. job. That's delicious. What we've food. heard, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's going to be really nice to have a lot of variety. Mm-hmm. And so we're talking about the old Iron Show, which is August seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth. So two weeks from tomorrow, over at the Blue Heron. Uh, you said uh, you're going to have a blacksmith. So. I mean, I know what a blacksmith does, but is he just bringing pieces that he's working on and he just works on them there at the show? No, he has a forge and anvil there and mm-hmm. and uh, he will be doing demonstrations and and have a fire going and working. Uh, that and glass times. blowing are, very, are super fascinating to me, mm-hmm. like watching someone work with glass and then also watching someone work with metal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's impressive. There may be a, sometimes two or three people in the blacksmith mm-hmm. shop working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And does he, so what does he make? Does he just make things that he likes to make? I mean. Well, he has a store in Rockaway uh-huh. called uh, Worcestershire. Uh-huh. And uh, so he produces uh, campfire sets and uh, trivets uh, or uh, Hooks for mm-hmm. uh, dinner bells, you know. So he's probably just making things that he'll then he either has, sell there or mm-hmm. take uh-huh. up to sure. his shop. Yes, sure. yeah. he will have some things for sale that'll mm-hmm. be on display there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a steak turner thing that he makes, and um, like barbecue equipment. You mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, we're talking about the old Iron Show. I'm going to take a quick break, and we're going to talk about TBCC. Tillamook Bay Community College's Career to Career Scholarship application deadline has been extended to August 31st. The scholarship program, which provides up to two years of free tuition coverage, is open to Tillamook County residents who have at least five years of work experience and are looking to transition to a new career or advance at their current job. The college is offering 15 scholarships that can be used beginning fall term. Applications can be found at tillamookbaycc.edu. All interested applicants are highly encouraged to come to the campus to speak with a career education advisor who can provide guidance and support throughout the process. Applicants will be reviewed on a first-come, first-served basis, and there are opportunities still available, but the college is encouraging those to apply, those interested to apply soon. For more information, please contact Rhoda Hansen, Director of Student Services, at 842-8222, extension 11101110 or email Rhoda Hansen at tillamookbaycc.edu. That's R H O D A. Yes, check that out. That's a real, I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but the college offers a two year, well, it's enough to do two years. I think it's 90 credits of free tuition if you've been out of. If you've been in the workforce for five years. I've heard about that. It's wonderful. Uh, I'm talking with Vince and Luis Bogard this morning. We're talking about the old Iron Show, which is in two weeks, August 17th through 19th at the Blue Heron. And we're talking about all the cool things that will be there. Hopefully get people interested to want to come. Can we have Vince talk a little bit about the county fair? We can. our involvement there, too. Yeah. You going to be at the fair? We will be at the fair. Which is next week. Yes. Ah, True. Yes. Where did that come? How'd that sneak up up on us? (laughs) (laughs) At, at the county fair, it will be a static display in mm-hmm. the land products uh, room mm-hmm. or, uh, area. And uh, then we will have a people mover uh, where the fairgrounds has two mm-hmm. people movers that yep. we pull by tractors. And we provide the driver and the watch person on the mm-hmm. uh, people mover to communicate to the right. driver. Those are the little trolley things that yes. are mm-hmm. take mm-hmm. you out to the parking lot if you're parked way in the back. We'll have some tr- smaller tractors because the door that way there is small. Mm-hmm. And then we have antique equipment. We'll have uh, what is it table with kind of strange tools or sure. <laughs> items that. Uh, it's always fun to see those things. Be like, now what exactly was this used for? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and That's it, exactly it, right. Draws a lot of interest, and uh, the old timers usually can answer mm-hmm. the questions, and and so then it's hopefully we can educate the younger people. Sure, and then get people interested in coming out to your show. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't know either. Right? Yeah, are. sure. <laughs> now what? It, now what was this used for? I like what you wrote here. They gave me some papers to read from uh but i like items used when people worked harder than today Uh, before machinery and technology was we had no need to go to a fitness center because Mm -hmm. right people were so physically active right yeah now now that life is easier we still Mm -hmm. need to take care of our own fitness Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) the old adage of armstrong power Mm -hmm. is apropos Armstrong. Uh, the land product section, is that uh, where like all of the fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. are? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. I yes. know which and section that is. Displays, yes. Yeah. It's just if you walk it's west of west. the floral. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. exactly what I was thinking. If you walk through the floral and you go mm-hmm. to the, what feels like the back of the room, but exactly. it's really west, you go through that little door and then there's yes, yeah, all mm-hmm. the fruits and vegetables on display. Mm-hmm. As far as some club history, yes, uh, let's talk uh, about. I can tell you a little bit about. A lot of people know how it started, but we lived in the Medford area for 36 years, and while we were down there, Vince was in the clubs of this type Mm -hmm. down there, and we knew that in retirement we were planning to move back to this area. We both grew up here. And when he would come, like we came to the county fair, he'd see people like Rudy Fink or Mm -hmm. anybody, old timers that lived here. And he thought, you know, there's got to be a lot of equipment, old stuff that's been around here. People have it in barns and sheds. And he said, maybe there's enough interest to form a club and do something like that here. And um, we moved back in December, or we moved back in June of 03. And in that December, we had Rudy and Gary Hersher, 
half a dozen guys came over mm-hmm. and they talked about the possibility of starting a club. A few of them had been to Brooks to the big antique power land there, but not very many of them. And they, they, would, they expressed an interest and said, well, we'll talk to some other people. And by February, we had 20 people that were interested. Wow. And it takes 20 minimum to mm-hmm. start a club. The early day tractor... Early Day Gas Engine and Tractor Association, often referred to as EDGTA, is a national organization. Mm-hmm. And to have some insurance and um, be sure. part of a club that, that sure. you, you go through that process. And uh, so in February, we formed, and we had he had been in communication with folks from Branch 141 down in the Medford area and knew some people at Branch 15, which is the Brooks area. And the folks said, you know, if you want to put on a show, we'll come and help you. And so we actually were living on property that was, we had built a new home and had very little landscape yet. Mm-hmm. So we said, well, let's just try doing it at our place. And we had tractors and so forth lined up along the county road. And then people set up engines. And we had people camping in our yard. And then the neighbors hadn't built yet. So there was mm-hmm. another field. And we probably had 200 people come to that show. Wow. I don't even remember the publicity that I handled yeah. on that one. But <laughs> word got out. And mm-hmm. uh, it was it was like, wow, this is something that we could do in Tillamook. And then it just happened to be that uh, he had been out to Brooks to the show, and Denny Pastega was there. They had never met mm-hmm. until they were there, and they and Denny Pastega is saying, "Wouldn't it be great to do something like this in Tillamook?" And Vince says, "Well, we have a deal for we you. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> we are." <laughs> <laughs> and so the following year, and for the last, this will be 14th year that we've been doing this at the uh, Blue Heron, mm-hmm. and it's just worked out a great location and um, just brings in a lot of people. It just I mean, the majority of our people, like he said, do come from out of the area mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. exhibitors and the, and many of the visitors. So it's it's been a great partnership and something yeah. good for the community. And it's great, um, I, I think, up Solly Smith. You probably don't get a lot of people that are driving by and going, oh, what's that? Right. Let me pull exactly. over. But at the Blue Heron. Exactly. And we couldn't have nice accommodated space. more people as right. it was. Yeah. But um, but. All good things sort of kind of wind down Mm -hmm. and our 15th show and we have been talking the last couple of years that by the time you're in your mid 70s, it might be time to start looking at the bucket list and change Mm -hmm. perspective and we're, we're not sure if somebody else is going to step up and take the leadership role and do this, but Doug Hendrickson has been our show chair since 2013, and mm-hmm. he, too, has other things that happen this time sure, of year that sure. he'd like to be doing. So the three of us are going to be stepping down, and this may be our last show. So uh, we do hope well, that people will come out. Not. Yeah. And, and if they come out, and maybe can encourage somebody else to get mm-hmm. her going, but we'll see what the future so holds. So your club... Uh, your club puts it on, right? Mm-hmm. So yes. are you looking for, I mean, you have to have members for your club. Do you, are you looking for new members that maybe would help step into those roles? Yeah, what do you think? Usually we are recruiting every year and mm-hmm. right now we just don't have a, a clear well, vision. If, if we got enough, then we could, re- that would be willing to take it involved. over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. Right. Absolutely. The aging of population is a lot to do with it too. Sure. I mean, we're on the younger side. Right. Of the of the membership, mm-hmm. we have a few that are younger, but very few. Mm-hmm. And the ones that are younger are working and don't have extra time too. Right. So we kind of got that window of life when you're giving to the community and you have the energy and the time and mm-hmm. so forth. So. If anybody fits that bill, they can contact us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have a website? No, just we have an email email address. Yes, just yes. kind of long. <laughs> yes, it is. It's br one fifty nine nw old iron at gmail dot com, mm-hmm. and that stands for Branch one fifty nine and the name of our club. Yeah, yes. old iron. Right, and uh, we have the phone numbers of people to contact. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a national website, and that is an easy one. It's www.edgeta.com. And if people go to that website, they can find out, of the 100 or so branches in at least 30 states, they can find out what activities are happening. Mm, mm-hmm. So if they're traveling and want to take in a show somewhere else, that, right, that's an opportunity, right. too. Uh, your phone numbers are 842-8460 and 801-4900. Is that yes. right? Okay, mm-hmm. that's what you gave me on your flyer, mm-hmm. so I hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, 503 on yeah. both of them. Well, yes. thanks for coming yeah. in this morning. We'll be sure to talk about the old Iron Show. Go check it out in 
two weeks, August 17th through the 19th. Uh, it's a Friday through Sunday at the Blue Heron. Mm-hmm. Always a fun time. Mm-hmm. Let's see, tomorrow we will have folks here from the Farm Bureau. Don't forget Senior Meals, noon every weekday at the Kiowanda Community Center in Pacific City, as well as the Tillamook Senior Center at 4th and Stillwell. Cost is $3 for seniors and six seventy five dollars for everyone else. Tomorrow is Moonlight Madness downtown on 2nd Street Plaza and 2nd Street starting at 4 p.m. with bouncy houses, games, a drive-in movie theater for kids, and a lot more. Saturday, the Nahalem Bay Winery is hosting their second annual Day of the Dog fundraiser starting at 2 p.m. Free admission and dog-friendly. This fundraiser benefits Nahalem Animal Healing. They'll have food, drinks, raffles, silent auction, dog games, and contests. And tomorrow, Karen Lovely will be at the Tillamook County Library at 2 p.m. offering up a mix of contemporary blues and blues rock. Don't forget about our farmer's markets, uh, Manzanita tomorrow from 5 to 8, Tillamook Saturday from 9 to 2, Nesco in Saturday from 9 to 1, and Pacific City Sunday to uh, 10 to 2 at the South County Library. And happy birthday to Becky Wilhelm and Sarah Christensen. Thanks again, guys, for coming in this morning. You're you welcome. Bet. Yeah. Thank you, Tillamook, for listening.